Good evening from Romania and welcome to Perspectives. I am Andra Diaconescu. Today we are talking about education and we will tackle the challenges of learning, drugs and bullying phenomenon and the solutions at a pan-European level with my colleagues from France, Serbia, Georgia, Albania and Bulgaria. Good evening and thank you very much for being here with us. I will start with the main concern Romania has now, and that is the outbreak of drugs in schools. Over 1,800 teachers in Brasov have started already to attend this training. We really believe that it is very important for teachers to be trained to courses how to detect a possible user, a possible dealer. If we have a suspicion, we should first notify the National Anti-Drug Agency, its officers. Current topics were addressed, which covered, besides the notions used in the field of drugs, the main categories of controlled substances and their effects. Signs and systems of drug use, reference systems for drug addicts from Romania. If a teacher thinks that a certain student is behaving suspiciously, with the help of this card, it's called the pupillometer, the teacher can check the normal pupil size of the student through a simple test and very quickly. It's a good initiative because the direction we're heading to is a poor one, unfortunately, and it shows. Would you consent as a parent to have your child tested? Yes, yes, no question. A lot of problems happen even if parents say they don't agree. I agree that it's a good thing. The corruption is very high among the students too. And curiosity. In Clujan, Dolj County is one representative of each school attends online courses about drugs, use and prevention. During a one-hour class every week or two, it's unlikely that we will be able to judge whether he or she is a user or for how long the substances have been present in his or her life. The idea of testing students has also sparked a wave of controversy. Several associations, but also officials, have warned that a much better way to stop drug use among young people would be prevention, not testing. A similar operations with the police took place in Albania this year. Franco Ergo is here with us. Good evening, Franco. Tell me what they, did they find? Uh, it is uh, true, Andra, in the middle of September, the Albanian police authorities carried out a significant anti-drug operation. 215 street, uh, street uh, drug dealers were apprehended as a result. Further 82 people had arrest warrants for them out and are being uh, currently imprisoned. Inspections were conducted by police officers at 355 locations, uh, uh, practically all uh, of all the major cities and towns of Albania surrounding schools, basically. According to the police director, this operation targeted 23 criminal organizations that were actively involved in trafficking drugs near schools. Cocaine, heroin and uh, cannabis sativa were all seized as a result of this operation codenamed Temple. The rise in drug use among young people has deeply concerned the authorities. The authorities emphasized as well that people are, being, uh, are beginning to use drugs at a younger age. The increasing usage of synthetic pharmaceuticals is a disturbing trend. The officials declared that the police officers would patrol not only the compounds, but also the areas around the schools to stop this tendency. And finally, the penal code, which doubles the penalty for offenses committed inside school grounds, will shortly be amended according to an announcement from the Interior Ministry. With these modifications, everybody hopes in this country to better dissuade uh, illegal uh, drug usage and related behaviors around educational institutions, Sandra. 
Thank you. Is this the same case in Serbia? Bojan, good evening. The school year kicked off on the 1st of September in Serbia, as always, and after the initial week in which there was reflection uh, and discussion about what happened in this uh, school massacre in May, uh, the first thing after that was uh, so-called initial tests, a uh, wave of initial tests in different uh, subjects and topics, and uh, the results were just as disappointing as the PISA tests uh, which proved that uh, pupils in Serbia learn a lot but know little. So there is an ongoing debate. Uh, why is it so that the children are learning a lot? They're carrying uh, loads of books, 20 kilos of books to school every uh, day. They have uh, many subjects, uh, many uh, classes and lessons, and they still in the initial tests sometimes don't know things like that sun rises in the east and sets in the west. And there, there's a lot of theor theories and there's a debate, why is this so? Why are they underperforming and what's wrong, what's broken in the education system? And among the reasons most frequently mentioned is that, first of all, ele uh, 11 different subjects for 12-year-olds um, may be overwhelming. Maybe the curriculum is too ambitious for them. Uh, second is that at the same time, uh, the teaching methods may be obsolete and outdated because uh, the new generations are digital generations, they are uh, um, multi-skilled uh, uh, multi in uh, new technologies uh, uh, and uh, they learn in a different way. Uh, all those books with uh, boring texts, with uh, uh, literature from the 19th century included uh, may not be uh, may not be uh, I interesting enough for them. Also, there is the motivation issue. Uh, like, if children see in our society that uh, some people who are influential and very well off were not really very good pupils in, in, in school but um, did well in their lives, it's, uh, it's not very motivating for them uh, to, to be hardworking. So, uh, probably it's all of these. Uh, there is no final conclusion, but the fact remains that in all the testings uh, of different kinds, it turns out that the pupils who are marked with very good marks, like excellent students, that actually they underperform uh, when, when, when they're asked to, to deliver, in particular in the tests that require the, uh, the, the useful application of theoretical knowledge. So, Boyan, the main problem you find in your country now, in the education system, is the results of the learning tests. Let's see a package on this. On the final exam in their mother tongue, students from Serbia answered half of the questions correctly, and even the best students show worse and worse results in college entrance exams. According to the PISA survey from 2018, every third student in the first grade of high school in Serbia is functionally illiterate. Experts claim that the reason for this lies in the wrong approach to education. Schooling in Serbia is still oriented towards reproducing information and knowledge, and due to the heavy workload and very ambitious programs, students and teachers do not have any space. But we do not have a request from the educational system to do something with that knowledge. Many students in Serbia haven't developed critical thinking, and some lack problem-solving skills. In order to fix things, one should first locate the problem, according to experts. We should see where our educational system misses the opportunity to provide our students with the kind of education that will enable them to make the knowledge they acquire at school really useful for life. The changes that are now being introduced in education are additional physical education classes, a national reading book, and an optional activity of virtue and values that is in focus this year because of the mass murder that happened in May in an elementary school in Belgrade. Some experts think that learning about values can help students develop. The goal is for them to master skills that will help them in life, such as cooperation, volunteering, critical thinking and assertiveness. 
The results of the PISA test for 2022 will be available at the beginning of December and due to the COVID period, it is expected that they will be worse compared to previous years on a global scale. In France, on the other hand, the education system has become unattractive for the teachers. And this school year started under this main concern. Why is the case, Valérie Goria? Good evening. Good evening, Andra. Well, indeed, the disaffection of teachers was one of the big issues uh, the French education minister said he wanted to address at the beginning of the school term. There's a deep crisis as regards educational careers. Students are no longer attracted by teaching job. And this year, more than 3,000 vacancies were not filled. To give you a concrete example, about 20% of posts in mainstream public colleges, high schools were left vacant, and nearly 30% were not provided for in vocational technical colleges and high schools. So the number one reason for this is the level of salaries. Wages range between 1,900 euros for beginners to a little more than 3,000 euros for someone at the end of a, let's say, 30-year career. Now, salaries are a bit higher in schools that are uh, in so-called priority zones, considered more difficult, meaning there are high levels of illiteracy or violence for instance, and where teachers have a hard time asserting their authority. So basically, the working conditions have become increasingly difficult, and this is the second big reason for which young people find teaching less attractive. So the government has pledged to work on these issues, and it also wants to reassert school values, in particular the principle of secularism. This was the much debated idea behind the new ban in schools of the abaya, which is a long traditional dress worn by some Muslim women, and it was considered uh, to um, a religious si sign, sorry. Now, it's a big debate, but the debate was quite short-lived at school. Out of 12 million pupils resuming school this year, about 300 girls turned up wearing a bias, and less than a quarter of them refused to take them off and went home. Thank you, Valerie. And now we're switching to Georgia. Let's see where, what this country is dealing with. In the villages and mountainous regions of Georgia, there are schools where only a handful of pupils are enrolled. The reason is internal migration. One such school can be found in the village Kodavardi Subani of Kareli municipality. For the past two years, the school had but one pupil. Now two newcomers have joined the first grade and the total number of students has grown to three. Classes for the first and third graders are held simultaneously in one combined grade. The village is experiencing internal migration. That is why there are such few students at this school. People are moving to the city to live and work. The combined grade functions as such. While the first graders are doing a reading assignment, the third grader is doing some reading or answering some questions by heart. Most schools with such few pupils have combined grades. Many schools in Georgian villages do not yet have access to natural gas and the internet. In winter, they use wood stoves to heat up the building and they connect to the internet with their phones. Transportation is also an issue. Lela Bestavashvili, a teacher at the Kodavardi Subani school, says she walks seven kilometers every day to get to class. I take a minibus to the stop. Then I walk from there. It's about seven kilometers from the bus stop to the school. I take the same route back during winter, summer, snow and wind. Numerous global and local studies show that the quality of education in Georgian villages and mountainous regions falls far behind that of schools in the cities. The main determining factor of academic success in students is still socio-economic background. Given that people living in rural areas are typically more impoverished, this is directly reflected in their educational achievements. In addition to the small number of students in in regional schools, there is also a lack of qualified teachers, or rather of teachers in general. The Education Ministry of Georgia has undertaken numerous programs to remedy the issue, receiving positive feedback from experts in the field. However, despite this, experts say that the steps taken by the state are not enough to achieve tangible results. 
Okay, so we're going to Georgia. Elena, good evening. Tell me what is the solution for Georgian pupils? Good evening, Andra. Well, um, for the students in Odavardi Subani, combined grades have been part of the solution. In addition to this, the uh, Ministry of Education of Georgia has undertaken various programs to help incentivize the flow of qualified teachers to these areas. Um, however, um, the Ministry of Education, these, the steps taken by the Ministry of Education have been met with positive feedback from the education experts. Uh, they are calling, uh, they are offering them higher salaries and other various benefits to teach in the rural and mountainous regions. However, the issue of subpar and low quality education is not exclusive to these regions. Uh, students from public and private schools from all over the country, including the largest cities in Georgia, are frequently seeking out private tutorage in addition to their regular school work, and this includes those students who are uh, normally excelling in their respective institutions. This has been a rising trend for many years and the probability that a student will take on private tutorage also increases with their age, what you would call high school students are frequently seeking out um, private lessons as they approach the unified national exams. These are the centralized, standardized tests that high school graduates seeking a higher education in Georgia must take. Um, it is a commonly held belief that the state-issued secondary educational program is not in congruence with the subject matter and difficulty of the United National Exams, which is why many feel the need to pursue uh, private tutorage in addition to their regular schoolwork. And this is a nuanced issue. While it is indeed true that private tutors do help students achieve greater academic success, many would argue that the fact that there is such a high demand for these tutors goes against the idea of accessible education for all. Yeah, this is very interesting and I think it's an issue that tackles all our Balkan countries and I will go to uh, Christiana in Bulgaria in just a bit to tell us how it is there, but please explain to us how is this system of education in Georgia without high school because it's unique amongst our countries. It is indeed true that the secondary educational system in Georgia differs in some ways from that of other countries. Students are not separated in different buildings based on what stage they're at in their secondary education. However, after completing eight years of secondary education, students have the opportunity to either advance to the ninth grade and potentially pursue higher education at a university, or they have the option to pursue a different path at a vocational or community college where they can pick up a craft in, say, ceramics, beekeeping, gardening, nursery, or any other variety, a whole variety of other disciplines. Yeah, interesting. Thank you very much, Elena. And uh, Christiana, good evening. Tell me, how is it in Bulgaria with the private lessons? Good evening, everybody. In Bulgaria, private lessons have become both uh, old and uh, strange tradition. On the one hand, uh, the Bulgarian education system here is such that sooner or later, each student goes to private lessons. In school, children are overloaded uh, with subjects and they uh, often find themselves unnecessary. They, got, uh, they get lost between the lines and the hours here are not enough to focus on what each student is really strong in. Uh, on the other hand, according to the Ministry of Education, private lessons are reassurance for parents. Uh, here in Bulgaria, the teacher during the private lesson uh, explains much better, pays individual attention to the student, questions can be asked. The strange thing is that school teachers and private teachers in smaller towns uh, usually are one and the same person. How about the price? The price uh, per hour or hour and a half for a um, uh, private lesson is between 15 to 50 euro. Yeah, thank you. About the same price in Romania as well. And it is such a paradox. We all speak about private lessons, but each day at school, pupils struggle with lessons and heavy backpacks. Here's how it goes.
In Albania, backpacks for six to eight year olds weigh around four to five kilograms on average. Children often complain of back pain, but parents do not always manage to understand their reasons. They usually have one shoulder raised, or when they sit, they do not stand properly. It can turn into scoliosis if it's not diagnosed in time and can even lead to surgery. School bags must be less than 10% of the child's weight. To avoid the problems it can cause the children, a proposed solution is the digitalization of lessons. Physical books should be replaced by tablets. But some education experts say that digitalization can have other consequences for children. This, according to them, will reduce the vigilance of children and will have more consequences on their social life. I am not pro these approaches, especially for children from first to fifth grades. It is the age when a child needs to socialize, to interact, whether with friends, the teacher or even his pencil. Children spend time in front of the screens and the sentences they build are always smaller. The impact of technology wins against both sides. I would see it positively implemented in high school because they know how to manage time. But how possible is it to digitalize schools in Albania? The country does offer full internet coverage and lessons have started in schools, but its spread across the country has a number of problems. We must have teachers prepared, infrastructure at schools and at home. This can happen when all homes have a laptop and internet. So far, there are 100 schools equipped with smart laboratories out of 1,172 basic education schools where children from 6 to 15 years old learn. It is expected that another 200 schools will join in. On the other hand, there are laboratories in each country where learning is based on technology and pupils are mentally challenged, not physically. Somewhere in between maths, literature and physics lessons, in these classrooms, first graders will learn robotics. For the first time in Sofia, more than 100 students will enter the world of innovation every day through a new modern center. They will learn to create robots. The children will line routes, create a scenario by working with the robot Kubo. Kubo is a funny little robot. There's no computer or software here. We program with a puzzle. Go forward, turn left and turn right. The children won't have electronic devices because it was very important for us to protect their health, especially at this age of six and seven. Kubo will be helping the kids with maths too. If it glows green, the answer is correct. Here in robotics, not only mathematical and logical thinking is required, creativity is also required. We work in teams. Particular children will be good at making a costume, a scenario, others at constructing an algorithm. And later on, the kids learn the basic operations of programming, without a heavy backpack and too many books. Oh, we expect the children to get a wonderful education, to be engaged in education, to enjoy everything that Museco has to offer, and to bring their friends to Museco, their parents, and to have interactive learning experiences. And uh, hopefully it's an infection that will spread around the country and more schools will have these benefits. The main problem, however, remains the shortage of teachers. There are fewer and fewer who teach information technology. However, the hope that this will change has not yet faded. Franco and Christiana, it is obvious that we are facing a gap between old-fashioned learning and new-fashioned learning. What do you make of it, Franco? Please be first. 
Andra, uh, every morning I carry the bags of my two little daughters. I did precisely the same thing this morning and I suppose I don't need to visit the gym during the academic year because they are pretty heavy. The weight of a bag for a student uh, that a student may carry is supposed to be no more than one-tenth of a child's weight. However, this doesn't always happen. But there is a discussion, as you said, in this country uh, about using books versus computers for teaching and learning. An experienced teacher told me uh, that because IT gives an intriguing framework for experimenting with new teaching and learning methods, it is progressively taking over. There are 330 schools with smart labs in, Al in Albania. IT is a subject taught in the first grade. There is currently one computer for every two, st two students and this ratio is rising. The instructors deem it a success. Teachers emphasize, Andra, that many courses are simpler for students to understand as a result of IT. Additionally, they have a variety of options uh, for how to teach. A teacher I spoke to claimed that the innovative teaching methods had a positive effect on students who lack motivation. IT as well enables distant students to have access to educational resources without feeling alone or isolated. Books nonetheless are not ignored according to the teachers I spoke with and they told me they are absolutely essentials in the classroom. So I suppose Andra I'll keep getting stronger by carrying the bags of my two little daughters. Yes, if this is uh, good for her, you, you are a father, you have to do this. But it's not about this, Christiana. How about the new ways of learning? Uh, relatively few schools in Bulgaria benefit from the European programs that offer modernization of the learning process, but there are STEM centers in some schools with uh, innovative uh, teaching methods, modern classrooms and equipment. Information technology and robotics are emphasized because they develop children's logical thinking and uh, social skills. The Ministry of Education offers various European projects uh, in order to break stereotypes, uh, but to be honest, uh, this is a difficult and slow process. Thank you very much. The main challenge is all over Europe is developing education systems adapted to the world we live in and harmful phenomenon that make it even harder. I have talked about drugs at the beginning, but there is one more to speak about, bullying. Valérie, I get back to you. What is the case in France and all over Europe? Well, indeed, school bullying has been a very, very hot topic in the past days in France after a 15-year-old boy committed suicide at his home two weeks ago. He'd been bullied for months at school and online, had informed the teachers and nothing was done. His parents alerted the principal and the academy um, accused them of calumny. So this caused an outrage. There were several other cases of suicides amongst teenagers in the recent past. One was a 13-year-old girl, Lindsay, who was harassed physically and verbally at school and constantly bullied on social media for over a year. Uh, just because um, girls didn't like the way she looked, she dressed, they mocked her hair, uh, quite in insignificant things. And there's also uh, quite a lot of uh, homophobic attack. Uh, this was a case of a 13-year-old boy who went through months of this and killed himself as well. So. Uh, it's not new, but the amplitude, um, the dimension of it go, uh, are tremendous because of social media. And it's estimated that 700,000 teenagers are victims of bullying each year, a large part of this online. Now, the government is pledging to fight against this. There is a law, uh, there is a hotline, but it's not enough. Um, it's, uh, there are other laws in other European countries, but um, 
still it, 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 it's not functioning. And this is also why an Irish woman, Jackie Fox, whose 21 year old daughter uh, killed herself after enduring three years of online and physical bullying, uh, is campaigning with European MPs for a European wide law pu punishing cyber bullying specifically and gender uh, cyber bullying in particular at the European level. She had inspired such a law in her own country. And late August, the EU enforced the so-called Digital Services Act, aiming at forcing large digital platforms to better control their social media content or risk heavy fines. But in the end, many associations and parents and teachers are saying that prevention and sensitization work must be made is essential. It's, it must be done first and foremost within the schools and the communities. Thank you, Valerie, and thank you all for being here this evening at Perspectives. This is all for us this evening. Thank you very much for watching and see you next time. I'm Andrea Diaconescu from Bucharest, Romania. See you soon. La revedere. Thank you.